السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ پیس اینڈ بلیسنگس آف اللہ المائٹی ٹو آل آف یو لیڈیز اینڈ جینٹل مین ویلکم اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم آئی سیک ریفیوج ود اللہ فرام دا شیطان دا اسٹون بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم و دا نیم آف اللہ موسٹ گریشیس موسٹ مرسیفل دا ٹاپک از واٹ القرآن says about sadqa sadqa translated as charity zaka translated as justification the translation that i am giving it to you uh, of these two words and and some of the words that i am going to give further the arabic words which are not properly translated it they are used in the languages of English and Urdu, the word as it is. All over the world you see that the Zakah word is not translated, it is used as, as it is Arabic word in Urdu and English. That you have to give Zakah, not translated. You have to give Sadaqa, not translated. So these words mean something in, in the language of other languages but if they are not translated then you can give any explanation what you want and that explanation is is being practiced in all over the world in different languages because they are not translated similarly i'll, I'll uh, describe few other words and all together then i will discuss the ayahs from the from this booklet the other word is tejara tejara means business and it is properly translated in all languages of the world tejara in arabic and in translation is business the other word is albai albai means the deal the deal or a contract between parties albai in arabic and translation is the deal Tijara, the business. You must put these words in your mind. Then there is a word, Ghanim. In Arabic, the word Ghanim means profit. Ghanim means profit. Some of the scholars have translated this word Ghanim as loot or booty. But it, if you find in the dictionary these two words, the word ghanim is translated as loot or booty or the prophet. You have to use your mind what this ghanim the word means. So I am taking the translation of ghanim as prophet, which most of the Arabs understand in their language that ghanim means the prophet in English. But there is another word in Arabic which is nafa'a which in Urdu speaking people, we have also uh, brought this word in Urdu also, nafa or munafa, which is translated in English as advantage, not profit. In Arabic, nafa means advantage, ghanim means profit. So ghanim in Arabic means profit and nafa Arabic translated in English is advantage. In Urdu it would be faida. Nafa, faida. Not profit. Because this word is in Urdu, in Urdu nafa means profit. But in Arabic nafa means advantage. In Arabic, Arabic word nafa translated in English would, would be advantage. The zaka is justification to justify taskiya to justify and sadaqa sadaqa means charity sadaqa means the charity our topic our lecture sadaqa means charity zaka means justification now i will just uh, give you in my own, own words how the people in the world lives Either they do a contract with people, meaning they do a job to earn money. They do a job 
or they do a deal with people, dealings. They have, al, that is al-ba'i, they have a deal with people or they do a tijara or they do, that is translated as business. Why are we doing tijara? We are earning money. The well, Arabic word for money in Arabic is amwal, wealth or mal is money. So people in the world, how they are living in the world, they are doing tijara, that is business, or they are doing a deal with people, like doing a job or a specific deal, and that is translated as al-bay. Why we do? We get wealth, money. So when we get the wealth, according to the system of Allah, you have to, you lead, first of all, you lead your life with this wealth. You spend the money on yourself, on your parents and brothers and sisters and on your environment, on food and shelter, everything. That is why you are earning, doing business or doing deals with people. The purpose is you get, you earn and that's your livelihood. From that, uh, the, the money that comes to you is in a profit form that would be known in Arabic would be ghanim. You do tijara, you do buy, you do business, you do deals, you get profit and the Arabic word is Ghanim. When you get the profit, then you spend on your family. Then you spend money on your families and children and, and you make houses and whatever you do. But there is a certain amount of money that have to be shared with Allah. Allah orders in the Quran that this, what is the sadqa, what is the charity, what amount of charity that you have to give. That is the lecture. So the amount of money that we do from business and, and, and we do deals, we get money. The money that comes to us and then we spend our money on ourselves and on, on, our, on our family members and on, on the house and, and, and luxuries, the certain amount of money we have to give sadaqa, charity. When I follow the commandment of Allah by giving sadaqa or charity, I am justifying my money that Allah has given me. That is zakah. When I give that money, charity to people, I justify my money, whatever the wealth that I've earned from business or deals, I justify my money and that in Arabic is justification. The Muslims in Zakah Arabic means to justify all your acts. Whatever Allah commands us in the Quran, whatever. If you establish a Salah and if people ask you, why you establish the Salah? Do you have to show the ayats or the verses that refers to salah, you are giving zakah, you are giving justification of your act, of your act of establishing the salah. That is justification, the word zakah. And the messenger came and yuzakki him, they just, he justified people. The, the commandments, the orders, the governing ayahs, the mahkamat ayahs mention the Quran, when you follow that ayah, ayahs that contains the command and if people ask you why are you doing so, so you give zakah by justifying why you are doing, that is zakah. So similarly the wealth that we have earned or we have by the deeds we get, then we can spend this money on ourselves and there are certain amount that has to be shared with the poor people and whatever the categories. That is the lecture. So you must understand why we give sadaqah. The charity is asked by Allah to give to the people or to the categories whom to whom to the sadaqah is given, that is a lecture, and to whom this sadaqah, the charity is to be given. Why we are giving is zakah. And zakah means to justify, justify means to justify your act. Why are you giving? You have to justify your wealth. The amount of wealth that Allah has provided to you, when you give it to people giving sadaqah, the charity, that is justifying yourself, the wealth that Allah has given to you. So you must know the meanings and the difference of the meanings. <clears throat> so now, the first ayah that I'm going to read from the booklet is Surah Al-Anfal and 841. Is that with you, right? وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّمَا غَنِمْتُمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَأَنَّ لِلَّهِ خُمُسَهُ وَلِلْرَسُولِ وَلِذِي الْقُرْبَى واليتامى والمساكين وابن السبيل إن كنتم آمنتم بالله وما أنزلنا على عبدنا يوم الفرقان يوم التقى الجمعان 
والله على كل شيء قدير and know that surely whatever غنم profit you get from anything if you believe in Allah then surely one fifth of it is for Allah and for Rasul the messenger and for Qurba the relatives and for Yatama the orphans and for Masakin the needy and for Ibn Sabil the sons of the way and whatever we reveal to our servant on the day of the division the day when the two accumulations are met and Allah has power over, over everything in the first portion the, this ayah I will discuss in two portions the first portion I will discuss here and then I will go to another surah and ayah and then we'll come back and then discuss the first of all in the, in the verse half portion or the first part of the ayah discusses about the word ghanim and I told you the meaning of the word ghanim is the prophet so the, the ayah says وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّمَا غَنِمْتُمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَأَنَّ لِلَّهِ خُمُسَ وَلِلْرَسُولِ so it, it, then there are the categories first of all we have to understand that Allah said and, and know that surely whatever the ghanim profit from anything if you believe in Allah and if you believe in Allah then surely one, one fifth is for Allah and the categories now, now what is happening is this portion that I am reading to you people have related this verse for in relation with war this word ghanim here it is mentioned that know for sure that whatever the prophet that comes from anything min shayin ghanim tum min shayin min shayin means from anything the prophet you get from anything then uh, one fifth is for Allah and the messenger and the, uh, and the categories but people in our minds from the historical uh, uh, evidence they are trying to say that this is related for wars in relation to war they say Mal ghanimat the loot or the booty so I would like to hear I would like to first discuss a verses from the Bible and that you have to come to the first page now this is the belief of a Jews and the Christian according to the good news Bible the Jews and the Christian faith Deuteronomy 20 10 to 15 the first page the previous page Deuteronomy 20, 10 to 15 verses I'm going to read and then you'll see why I'm reading and what's the what, what is the relation to our topic of today. You see the Jews and the Christians are trained. They are trained to do to 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 do to loot or to take booty. How? They are asked to in this Deuteronomy 20, 10 to 18, when you go to attack a city, first give its people a chance to surrender this is the context of the people for the Jews and the Christians they are asked when you want to attack any city when you want to attack any city ask these people to surrender to you this is the belief of the Jews and the Christian before attacking ask for peace and surrender if they open the gates and surrender they are all to become your slaves and do forced labor for you if all the beasts the other people the Muslims and the Hindus and the Buddhists and the atheists and the agnostics and the, all these people if they open the gates to surrender then you force them a labor as slaves become your they, they make you slaves but if the people of the city will not surrender but choose to fight 
surround it with your army. If they do not surrender the, the, the other Jews and the other than the Jews and the Christians, if they do not surrender, then what you do? You surround them with your army. Surround them. And then, then when your Lord, I'm reading in continuation, then when the Lord, your God, lets you capture the city, kill every man in it. That means you, when you, they didn't want to surrender, you surround with your army and by the force of your army power, you kill every man. You may, however, take for yourselves the women and the children and the livestock and everything that belongs to your enemies that Lord has given it to you, mal ghanimat, booty, loot, that has been given to you. That I am reading not the Quran, the Bible. And this is how the Jews and the Christian are waging wars all over the world. They have been spreading Christianity. They have been spreading this, this Christianity and Judaism by this, by following these verses. They have been spreading the, their religion by the sword, by the, by the army power. And still today they are doing so. They did it. And that is the loot. You may however take for yourself the women, the children, the livestock, booty, the loot, and everything that belongs to your enemies, the Lord has given it to you. That is how you are to deal with those cities that are far away from the land you will settle in. Meaning all over the world, wage wars, first ask them that you surrender. If they surrender, then make them slaves. If they don't surrender, then wage war against them, kill every man and take their belongings, the booty and loot them. This religion, Christianity has been spread by the sword, by the wars all over the world. They are doing it. And they are lootifying their loot booty and taking all the belongings because they are following their verses of the Bible. This is the training of the Bible, the Christians and the Jews' faith. Now, according, if you read this in context, then the people reading in this ayah, they, these new reverted Jews and the Christian, brought this loot here, the Ghanim. In the Christian and Jews, the word Ghanim, because the Jews and the Christian Arabs, they speak Arabic language, the Jews and the Christian. So you, if you read this, these verses that I read to you from the Bible in Arabic, they will say Ghanim, the loot, the booty. It is the booty and the loot for them, for the Jews and the Christian. They wage war, war against the cities, they conquer the cities, and then they loot and booty their belongings of their city. But for here in the ayah in Arabic pure, it means profit. It doesn't mean loot or booty. It says, and know that surely whatever ghanim profit you get from anything, if you believe in Allah, then surely one-fifth of its sadqa charity is for Allah and therefore for Rasul, the messenger, and for Quruba, the relatives, and for Yatama, the orphans, and for the masakin, the needy, and for Ibn Sabil, the son of the way. Now in this ayah, I, I just want to clarify the word Ghanim is not loot, it's not booty in the, for the Arabic Jews and the Christian, they are also uh, speak Arabic language, they translate here booty for, for because th this is the concept of the, uh, the Bible of this concept, make wars and capture them and lootify them, take the booty. But here it means Ghanim, profit from anything. It says, it says Ghanim tum, your profit, Min shay'in from anything. From anything, when you take, you have a profit, you have to share it with the categories. Now, as I told you, we will discuss these in parts. If you count the number of the categories, you will see these are six categories: Allah and the Messenger, two for the Qurba, the relatives, three for the Yatama, the orphans, five the Masakin the needy who are reduced to poverty, and six is Ibn Sabil, the sons of the way. 
the six category categories are mentioned to whom the ghanim to ghan, uh, a profit have to be distributed among the categories is for allah said this prophet is for these people this for allah and the messenger and all these categories now why i will say i will go further and then we'll come back and discuss the other portion there is an ayat in the quran we go to surah number uh, al hashr 59 seven ayah ma afa allah ala rasulih min ahli al qura fa lillahi wa lir rasul wa lid al qurba wal yatama wal masakin wa ibn sabil kay la yakuna dulatan bain al aghniya minkum wa ma atakum ar rasul fa khuduhu wa ma nahakum anhu fa antahu wattaqu allah inna allah shadid al iqab whatever allah has bestowed best, whatever allah has bestowed from the people of the cities over his messenger is for allah and for the rasul the messenger and for qurba the relatives and for yatama the orphans and for the masakin the needy who are reduced to poverty and for Ab ibn sabil the sons of the way if you look in the arabic exact word by word it is these categories are the same the categories are the same no difference but since i i am just trying to read further also just to clarify that two categories are mentioned further in the in the further word in the continuation in 8 al hashar 858 59 surah 8 and 9 lil fuqara al muhajirin alladhina ukhruju min diyarihim wa amwalihim yabtaguna fadlan min allah wa ridwana wa yansurun allah wa rasulah ulaika hum as sadiqun والذين تبعوا الدار والايمان من قبلهم يحبون من هاجر اليهم يحبون من هاجر اليهم ولا يجدون في صدورهم حاجة مما اوتوا ويؤثرون على انفسهم ولو كان بهم خصاصه ومن يوق الشح نفسه فاولئك هم المفلحون and it is for furqa muhajirin the poor migrants who are expelled from their circles and their wealth seeking the bounty from allah and good pleasure and helping allah and his messenger they are who they are those who are truthful and it is for those who are the settlers of the circles and of the belief from before before them they love whosoever migrate towards them and they do not find in their chest any need for what they are given and do don't and they do not have any effect over themselves even if poverty is with them and whosoever is guarded against the stinginess of his soul then they are those who are prosperous now i am just discussing the number of the categories so if you look in the in the in these two verses the behavior i'll def, of course definitely discuss later on but i am just trying to establish the number of the people or the categories that are mentioned so if you look the the just the further the above portion of the first uh, eight verse lil for lil fuqara al muhajirin alladhina ukhruju min diyarihim wa amwalihim these are the people the fuqara muhajirin is the seventh category 